In this video, we're going to take a look at maximum and minimum values and also the extreme value theorem. One of the most useful things that we can learn from a function's derivative is whether there are any maximum or minimum values and where these values occur. Once we know how to find these values, which are often called extreme values, then we will be able to answer such questions as what is the largest possible volume that can be created for a given rectangular piece of cardboard? Or what is the least expensive way to pipe oil from an offshore well to a refinery down the coast? Now, in general, the problem is to find the largest or the smallest value of something, usually subject to some certain conditions. Now, the something will be modeled by a function f of x. So we're going to take a look at the precise definition of what it means to be the largest and the smallest. So suppose we have c, and it is a point in the domain of a function f of x. Then an absolute maximum occurs at c if f of c is bigger or equal to f of x for all the x in the domain of f. So what it's saying is that that y value at c is bigger or equal to all the other y values. An absolute minimum occurs at c if f of c is less than or equal to f of x for all x in the domain of f. So similarly, we could say that the y value at that c value is smaller or equal to all the other y values that are in the function. Now, sometimes it is important to consider points which are only the largest or smallest in small portions of a graph. Now, these are called local or relative. So a local or relative maximum occurs at C if f of C is bigger or equal to f of x for all x in an open interval containing C. Now you might wonder why it's similar to the absolute max, but remember this is just for a small portion of the graph. <coughs> Excuse me. A local or relative minimum occurs at C if f of C is less than or equal to f of x for all the x in an open interval containing c. So again, that value, the y value, is the smallest in that little area that we're looking at. Now, if you want to think about it this way, if a local max is like being the toughest guy on your block, then an absolute max is like being the toughest guy in the world. Local maxima and minima are important in graphing functions, um, among other things too. So we're going to take a look at this pictorially first, um, and then we'll take a look at uh, word problems later on in the chapter. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's take a look at um, this first one here. So we have the absolute max at x. Now there's only two values here. So we have a point here that I've given you a value for and a point here. So the maximum occurs at x equal to 32, which is up here. The absolute min occurs at an x value of 11. Now the local max, because there's only one max, it also will be 32. And then the local min, since there's only one min, it will also be 11. Okay, let's take a look at a different example. So the absolute max at x, the largest y value we can see is this one here because that one's the highest. So the absolute max occurs at 1. The absolute min occurs when x is equal to, this is the lowest, at 3. Now a local max, we can see that both when x is 1 and at 7 is kind of a high point. So we say that a local max occurs when x is 1 and also 7. And a minimum occurs only at this one spot here, which is at x equals 3. All right, I'm going to get you to try C on your own. So let's jump to D over here. So here we have an absolute max at x equal to 8, because that's the largest value that we have. An absolute min occurs at x equal to, well, actually, if you wait a minute, now I've tried to put this right here on the point here. But this open circle, it, there's a hole here. And this hole is kind of where the minimum is. So actually, there is no minimum because we can't reach a low point or a low value value because it's, there's an open circle. A local max at x occurs at 8. 
but also there's kind of a max here at 15 as well. So it occurs at 8 and 15. And since there was a hole at the lowest point, or possibly at the lowest point, there actually is no local min as well. And then you can try E and C on your own. And we can talk about them later too. Now the following figure shows a graph with five points uh, where a function has extreme values on its domain A to F. So we're going to identify them. So here we have some points. And I actually want to be able to identify all of these points on this graph where I have a, a letter. Okay. So at A... Since this is the lowest point on the entire graph, we see that at A, this is an absolute min. The highest point on this graph is at E. So we would say that here, this is the absolute max. Now there are some other maxes. There is a high point here, but we call that one a local max. And then there's also some low points here and here. So we're gonna call this one a local min. And this one is also a local min. Now at B, this point here, it's kind of in the middle. It goes through, it doesn't reach a high point or a low point. So we're gonna say that there's no extreme value here. Now, it's an important point here because if you notice where all the maximum min appear, occur, uh, the tangent lines are horizontal. So there's a horizontal tangent here, here, at the top here. Now, probably not here at the local min here, at the endpoints, but we can see that at these ones in between, even this part where there's no extreme value, it seems like all the slopes are zero. So we know that the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So this leads to the following theorem, which is called Fermat's theorem. And Fermat's theorem states that if f has a local maximum or a minimum at a point, at an x value, then the derivative, and the derivative exists, then the derivative at that local max or min is equal to zero. And you can see that that's true at these local maxes or even absolute maxes and mins. Now, this will lead us to the extreme value theorem. So we can see um, that some conclusions can be drawn from these examples. Now, we can see that a function needs not to have an absolute max or an absolute min. So if you look in this example here, there's a hole here. So there actually was no absolute min. So we can have um, both an absolute max and min. We can just have one, either an absolute maximum or an absolute minimum, or actually we could have a, an example where there is neither, where nothing, uh, we don't have an absolute maximum or a minimum. Now a continuous function must have an absolute max and an absolute minimum on a closed interval. So if we have endpoints on our interval and it doesn't keep on going forever and ever, then we will have an absolute max or min. Now the second observation is important. It says that if you look for an absolute max or minimum on a closed interval, at least in principle, you won't be disappointed. So that means that you will always find something there. So this leads to the extreme value theorem, which states that if a function f is continuous on a finite closed interval, a to b, finite meaning that we have an endpoint, then f has both a maximum value and a minimum value in the interval. All right, so let's take a look at how to find these extreme values. So we can expect um, these absolute maximum and minimums to occur at certain places. So based on the examples above, we can see that it occurs at a place called, um, where the x value is called a critical number for f of x. So the critical number um, occurs at a number
C in the domain of F such that either F prime of C equals zero or F prime of C does not exist. Now, where does it not exist? So if you remember from before, examples of where the derivative doesn't exist is at corners or at cusps. Um, notice we can also have a max or min at an endpoint of an interval. So the closed interval method, um, this tells us that first, uh, so sorry, this is the procedure um, that we should use uh, to find the absolute maximum or minimum in a continuous function on a closed interval. So the first thing I would recommend is you're going to locate uh, the values of f at the critical numbers of f which lie in the interval from a to b. Then we're going to also locate the values of f at the endpoints of that same interval. Now the largest of the values from steps one and two will be the absolute max, and the smallest of these values is going to be the absolute minimum. Now a remark for people who know some calculus already, do not confuse this with the first or second derivative test. So if you've learned that already, don't think that this is the first or second derivative test. So you're gonna plug the candidate points into f of x, not the first derivative or the second derivative. All right, so let's take a look. So let's find the extreme values of f of x on the given interval and where they occur. So the first one we have f of x is equal to x squared minus one, um, and our interval is from negative one to two. So we're first going to locate the critical numbers based, oops. I can learn to understand you much. All right, sorry about that. So the first thing we're gonna do is to find the critical numbers. So we do that by finding the derivative. So the first derivative, we we'll get 2x. We're going to set the derivative equal to 0, because remember that's where we can find our local max and mins. So 0 equals 2x, and then x is equal to 0. All right, so I'm going to create a little table here. And we have x and f of x. And the numbers that I want to test to see where the numbers occur is, are my endpoints. So I knew that there was an endpoint from negative 1 to 2. And I also have my critical point of 0. So I'm going to take negative 1, plug it into f of x. So I have negative 1 squared minus 1. So that's going to be 0. Plug in 0, I get negative 1. And then plug in 2, 2 squared minus 1, I get 3. All right. So the lowest of these numbers is negative 1. So this is the y value that is the smallest. We're going to say that this is now the absolute minimum. So the absolute minimum is equal to negative 1, and it occurs at x equal to 0. 3 is my largest number. So this is the absolute max. And that is equal to 3. So 3 is the largest number, and it occurs at x equal to 2. Now, if we do some more testing, we can actually check to see that 0 is actually a local minimum. But right now, what I'm asking you to find is where the absolute min and the absolute max are. All right, let's take a look at one more. So f of x is equal to x squared minus one. So we actually can see this is the same derivative. So I'm gonna set everything equal to zero, x equals zero. But I have a different interval. So this time, I have negative two, zero, and 2. So when I plug these numbers in, I'm just going to do this quickly, I get 3, negative 1, and 3. Now I can see that I have two maxes, and they both are at 3. So we're going to say that the absolute max is equal to 3, and it occurs at x equal to plus or minus 2. And then we have an absolute min equal to negative 1, and that occurs at x equal to 0.